Chapter 2. We are pirates! Across the clunky wooden boardwalk, Captain Farrell tried his best to help his three men with the large wooden chest. Two men in front, and two, including the captain, behind. Captain Farrell was a tall man with a tight-fitting uniform and soft eyes. But when tempered, his lips would offer a smirk of arrogance. His men respected him because he was a better man than most. They walked from the shipyard as sailors, soldiers, and merchants rummaged about the busy port. It was planned to be a quick delivery. Supplies and gunpowder. However, it was actually a diversion. It was, in reality, payroll for the Queen's Navy here in the Caribbean islands. Mixing it in with furniture, crates, and barrels was just a creative tactic the Navy used from time to time to make sure their men got their wages so far from home. Captain Farrell saw commotion on the docks as several men began to fight. A hulking, black-skinned man with a shaved head and a Spaniard with a red headband were mixing it up in the main courtyard near the docks. The problem was, this was Captain Farrell's path. He let out a sigh. <sighs> we will take the roundabout way, he ordered. Avoid any chance of thievery. He and his soldiers walked down the dock a few yards and cut down a dirt road behind several of the massive wooden and mud-baked brick buildings that outlined the harbor. They followed the back alley road nearly thirty feet to a small intersection when two men stepped from a building with their pistols ready. Rags covered the lower part of their faces. Bandits. Farrell shook his head as one of the men, wearing all black with a feathered cap, stood behind him. The man in black placed his hands on his hips with confidence and shouted, Stand and deliver, or the devil may take you. Farrell gritted his teeth. Do as he says. Farrell turned to face the man in black. His cocky voice gave him away. You're not going to get away with this, James, he said. Just tell them James the Horror Hook stole the payroll from you. Besides, Farrell, I'm not robbing you. I'm robbing the Queen. You're calling yourself the Horror? Please, you're a pirate. You don't get to name yourself, Farrell added. James stepped up to Captain Farrell, leaned in, and pulled down his mask. Come on, not in front of my men he said softly. Your men? What about my men? Farrell grunted, his teeth grinding. <sighs> Fine, whatever, just open the trunk. Farrell opened the trunk with a small iron key. James walked over, pulling his flintlock pistol. Ha <laughs> ha! See, that's how we do it! He motioned Farrell away with his hand and looked inside. Inside were maps, a canister of gunpowder, some candles, and a small envelope. So, where is the payroll? James asked. It is still on the damn boat. See, we knew ilk like you or other hooligans may try to rob us. So we were bringing it in with some other items. Only an ex-Navy man like yourself would know such a tactic. We have lots to unload. Chairs, tables, even a bedroom set. Really, James, if you're going to be a bloodthirsty killer pirate, you have to do more. In fact, you let us go and help us unload. I will pay each of you a half a day's wages and lunch. James scratched his head, still a bit confused. That's not what we are. We are pirates, not movers. There has to be something. He took the envelope from the chest and opened it. There were several gold coins and a letter. He opened it quickly and began to read it. Uh, to the Commonwealth of the Port Authority, use this small amount of coin to hire more local security in case of uh, pirates! Aha! Uh, blah, 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 in her service. Admiral Bird. Ha! Ah, this proves it! We're pirates, and they know all about James Hook. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't mention your name, James. It could be any. Pirate, actually. Farrell grinned. If this is about that night with the Admiral's wife, I thought she was his personal cabin cleaner. 
She looked so young. She lied to me. From one of the alleyways, the hulking black fighter appeared, as did the Spaniard who rubbed his jaw as the big man held his shoulder. What did we get? Was the fight long enough? The Spaniard asked. Farrell shook his head at James. Really? That was your diversion to get us in the alley? Well, it got you where I wanted you, didn't it? James shot back. Okay, let's tie them up and just go. It's not the score we wanted, but it's enough to have a fun week away from this place. The other two men began to tie up Farrell and his men. James, you're not going to get away with this, Farrell warned. I am not getting in trouble because of a pathetic thief wannabe pirate. Do you even have a ship? Because that last one was the size of a raft. Last chance. Help us unload and we forget this ever happened. Look, Wayne. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain Farrell. I'm doing the best with what I got, so don't worry about me or my men. Or lunch. Go back to kissing the Queen's royal backside. The Spaniard put a gag over Farrell's mouth and moved him into a corner. After the men were tied tightly to a wooden barrel, the crew of thieves began to leave the alleyway. Just remember who robbed the Queen this day! James the Horror Hook! James said proudly. Farrell watched, but rolled his eyes. The men walked proudly with a strut until out of sight of the soldiers, then ran like hell itself was at their heels. They merged into the traffic on the port and made their way to a small rowboat tied to a walkway. They all climbed into the boat, packed in like sardines in a can, as the hulking black warrior began to row. The Spaniard was the first to speak. So, there was no payroll? Yes, just not with them, James said. It was still on the ship. So, do we get paid? The hulking black man said. Yes, Blackjack, just not as much, James said. Uh, do we, the Spaniard continued, hey, 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 enough with the questions. We got some money, we just need a stronger plan. Plus, people will know James Hook and his men are not to be messed with. I don't think they will think that, the Spaniard said. Well, they will once we do a bigger job and, and really make some noise. Will that captain really hunt you down? How did you know him? asked a pirate with red hair and thick mustache. Well, Perry, if you must know, long story short, we were both on the same ship for years in the Navy. Just, let, let's not talk about it. He went his way, I chose mine. It's nothing. Bad memories. We got some money. We did our pirating thing. Let, let's celebrate, James said. They continued out into the ocean, up to a small boat with one large mast and enough room for a dozen men. Ha <laughs> ha! Look, we're almost home, and that gentleman is worth all the money in the world. There she is, the proud ship, our ship, and our home, the Conqueror. She is all ours. No one can boss us around or tell us how to live. We can be free, James exclaimed. Free and hungry, mumbled Blackjack. The men laughed. But still free, James smiled. Besides, you eat for three grown men. The big man rubbed his belly with a smile. She said she is empty. The small boat pulled up along the small ship, and ropes were lowered down to it. The men began to climb aboard. One man, wearing a pair of glasses with thinning hair, paced impatiently on the deck. He wore all black, and a faded white priest collar could barely be seen. When James stepped aboard, the man walked over quickly. How was it? Did you have to kill anyone? Did you get the money? James handed the man several small coins and stormed off. Not now, Father Bob. I will be in my captain's chambers. Do not disturb me. For anything. From below deck, two men appeared, one tall and slender as a weed, and the other the complete opposite, short, thick with a shaggy face. Did the fight work, Captain? asked the short one. Not now, Morgan, James said back. The taller one asked. So we don't eat again tonight? No, Drake, we will eat. I have some coin, at least, enough for soup and bread. Maybe an ale or two, if we go for it watered down at the Crow's Nest Tavern. Oh, the Crow's Nest is vile! That waitress spits in my stew every time! Morgan complained. 
That's because you never compliment her good features. Drake teased. She doesn't have any. Even her backside is ten miles of flat dirt road. No, she has a quite nice round backside if you like a little curve in the road. Bah, Morgan argued. She's a horrible girl. Well, she's sweet on me, Drake replied. She is not. She is sweet on everyone, Morgan added. Enough, you two. <sighs> it's like listening to an old married couple arguing, James murmured. James handed Father Bob a small handful of coins. The man looked at the coins and back at Captain Hook, who was near the steps leading below to his cabin. Where do we set sail, Captain? Father Bob asked. Hell if I care, just head west back to the cove. Maybe a good night of drinking is all we can do. He then disappeared down into the ship. 